And he's got the key in? Yes, ma'am, and her car. I don't, she's real hysterical, and I just decided I need to call law and get them down here. Three-year-old Michael and 14-month-old Alex Smith have been missing eight days. Nine days. Again, the search is on. This is the Our first have been carjacking. Torn apart. Susan and David Smith came Many out of seclusion. Remain. There's speculation this could Law be a Law enforcement hoax. Cannot, cannot rule out anything. anything. The lead had fallen through. To be back to there are so one. many people working on this case Inconsistencies in the now. statements of Susan Smith. Susan Smith. Susan Von Smith. Susan Smith has been arrested and will be charged with two counts of murder in connection with the deaths of her children, Michael, three, and Alexander, 14 months. Get them going, Pam. They got two kids. Okay. There was this update. We have a breaking story out of Spartanburg. Perked up. I think, as I remember it, I was wa watching the news in bed, and they said that there have been two little babies kidnapped in Union. So, bingo. We sent one of our There's best reporters, Heather Hoops. In fact, this is the first carjacking. So we got in the car. We drove up to Union. Uh, I remember going to the sheriff's office first, and. Um, Thankfully, I had interacted and knew the head of SLED, uh, Chief Stewart, back then. And so he told me they were getting ready to fly John D. Long Lake. It just seems so unfair that somebody could take such two beautiful children. She said that she was uh, stopped at a traffic light at around 9 o'clock at night, and that while she was stopped at a light, a man jumped in the car and forced her to drive got her out of the car and goes away with her children. They were screaming, hollering, and crying, and I'm just scared that he just lost his patience or something. At that yeah. point, I mean, we thought it was an abduction. We had no reason to believe that a family member would have been involved. As I remember it, it was the lead story on our evening newscast. The last sentence of her story was, and this is almost verbatim, verbatim Authorities are not ruling out anyone as a suspect, including the mother. Your hearts just feel heavy, you know, for the things that's going on. And like I say, nothing has ever happened like this in Union before. The reason why I remember it so well is I spent the next hour to two hours with viewers screaming at me. How dare you? How dare you? That poor woman, she's had her two little babies kidnapped, and you would suggest that she might have been responsible? This story touches most every listener, and knowing that, the media have plugged into Union County. Outside the sheriff's office, news vehicles and high dollar satellite... I couldn't believe how many reporters from all over the country were already there. It just it captivated the, the heart of the nation and the heart of the world, just like that. I remember when Willard Scott cried on the Today Show uh, when they showed the little boys' photos. And I, th I think America at that point was crying. People knew I was the director. I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't walk down the street. I couldn't go in the restaurant. I couldn't go in the bathroom. And somebody was saying, what's the latest on the Susan Smith story? What's the latest on the... Have they found those little boys? Please bring them home. So this, this didn't happen to strangers. This happened to people that they, that most everyone knew. So, it, it, and of course, everybody's out looking. They all want to find these little boys. Hi, would you like to buy a badge? They're a dollar piece? Just out of nowhere, this black guy came up and we just opened the door and jumped in the car. So they had this sketch and the sketch was up everywhere. And so everybody was looking for not only the car, the boys, but that man. In the Susan Smith case, there were reports of African-American males being detained all over the country because of a general resemblance to this composite sketch. A dialogue started in the newsroom of this composite is so generic, do we continue to use it? And the newsroom decided to stop using that. What was interesting about the sketch is most people tell you detail first and then broaden out to 
more global information. In her case, it was global without many details. Because you want to say, well, anything is, is better than nothing, right? But not necessarily so if it's going to identify 900 people in a five you know, mile square area. There were people riding around here with rifles in the back of the trucks, shotguns in the back of the trucks. And I'm sure there were numerous people riding around with the pistols in the car. I think a lady I saw actually on an interview, I think it was out of Spartanburg, said it best. Um, they they were af asking an African American lady said does it does it bother you that uh, that they're blaming you know or, or believed initially it was a black man. I want to kill their children and then put it on me. And that lady said the most insightful thing I thought she said um, Union County didn't blame a black man. Susan Smith blamed a black man. Speak up, black man. That's right. Speak up, what black people. What this sled official told me was. Uh, we had to weigh and balance. He told us that it was a tightrope because he had to continue to keep her confidence. Um, and so that was part of um, pretending that the sketch might be real. To play upon this racial stereotype that we, within SLED, felt that recovering the bodies was more important. Key point, though. They knew from the beginning she was lying. The biggest thing in the case was um, the inconsistencies. Well, the truth is, if you looked, um, David Smith looked like a guy who someone had kidnapped his kid. Susan Smith looked like someone who was excited to, for the media attention. Uh, they've told NBC that there were inconsistencies in your stories. Do you know what inconsistencies uh, they were referring to? Uh, no, ma'am, I really do not know that. Who wants to carjack a car with little children in there? If it wasn't a motive to take the children, the children should have turned up. If it wasn't a motive to steal the car, in most carjackings, if it's a robbery, the car is abandoned somewhere close by. So we couldn't figure the motive. While the search intensifies, both Susan and David take polygraph tests. An investigator confronts Susan, demanding to know why she killed her children. She storms out of the room, jeopardizing Wells's investigation. We got in a car at the exact same time of day that she said it happened, and we decided to drive the route to see what it was like. Well, what we realized really quickly is that that light doesn't turn red at that time of the night because there's so little traffic. I went to Sheriff Wells, I remember this, and I said, that light blinks. It doesn't go red. And he just looked at me like, you know, exactly. We all were sort of just waiting waiting for basically Susan Smith to crack. And she did. Well, the other thing we did, what I was trying to determine is what Michael and Alex would have actually gone through with the sinking of the car. And it took almost six minutes or thereabouts for the car to sink. And again, the car basically went, turned it over, and then what happens, you start seeing water coming up ultimately in the floorboard, through the vents. And I mean, it's just, it, it just comes up and ultimately covers the camera. Um, you could have heard a pin drop in that courtroom. I heard a noise and it was almost like a giggle. And I look over at Susan Smith and like the law clerk for the defense are um, playing, writing notes or playing tic-tac-toe and she's giggling or whatever while this is playing and, and the jury's out. So the jury comes in and I hear a noise from the other side of the courtroom. And yes, this time Susan was crying. Guilty of murder on both counts in the deaths of sons Alex and Michael. Today, Susan Smith was sentenced for drowning her sons in a Union County lake. And today on this anniversary, the state newspaper released a letter Susan Smith sent We to figured that reporters. there were so many other stories that had been done about Susan Smith and about the case, we needed to figure out the story that hadn't been told. The, the most memorable 
um, quote that she gave was, and I, I'm paraphrasing here, but it, I believe it was, I'm not the monster that society thinks I am. Is she a monster? I don't think she's a monster at all. None of them is the monster that we think they are. She's a thousand percent remorseful. Good and bad in all of us. But what she did, her actions were monstrous. Did she know right from wrong? Did she have other choices? At some point at the end of the day, Susan Smith has to own that, that she made those choices, however horrible they are, and, and she made those decisions. 